Life is transient. In a bid to win against the inevitable disease called death, people have always looked to transcend the material world. Let's look at some of the drugs they use to do just that. The ancients wanted to avoid succumbing to the very rational fear of death and ascend beyond the material and approach the immaterial. A lot of ancient mythology concerns the spiritual and the metaphysical. To be able to reach the exalted realms, they relied on drugs. However, the perception of drug use in ancient times was quite different than ours. Today, governments try to discourage the use of drugs to reduce abuse and drug-related criminal activity. What we consider a radical, almost desperate measure to escape the difficulties of life almost had a ritualistic value for our ancestors. It was less of an escape and more of an effort to get in touch with the barest, most primal and sensational aspects of life. In the olden days, they had a rather shamanistic contribution to social life. Medicines were incorporated into rituals and social rites, and when ancient texts mention drugs, they usually associate them with medicinal or religious use. For many years, academia thought that the use of drugs did not extend beyond this. It was the prevalent rhetoric, an unsuspected consensus, and no one felt they needed to challenge it. Over the years, archaeological research and further linguistic analysis of ancient texts have changed the trajectory of our understanding. For the longest time, scholarly work on the effect of drugs in ancient times focused on their spiritual uses. We now know that there was an international drug trade as far back as 1000 BCE. That means that even three millennia ago, people were using drugs as a way of coping with reality. We find evidence of drug use throughout ancient history, and even though the overwhelming evidence points to and corresponds with the religious spiritual narrative, there are signs of daily drug use as well. We can even claim that drugs have existed in almost every ancient society and have been much more common than we previously thought. For starters, let's consider American history, for it is in the modern-day United States that a president claimed drug use to be public enemy number one. If we look at the New World before its European discovery, we realize that indigenous people have been using hallucinogenic drugs as far back as 9000 BCE. Mescaline beans, remnants of this bygone era, can be found in Peru. This practice continued well into the future, and the Inca, Maya, Olmecs, and Aztecs were fond of consuming psychoactive plants. It allowed them to provoke an altered state of consciousness, helping them perform their spiritual rituals. Psychedelic substances were also used and continue to be used for therapeutic purposes in ancient Mexico. Indigenous communities still treat illnesses like migraines, depression, seizures, and similar neurological conditions by performing ceremonies with state-altering substances. We know that entheogens, hallucinogens used in the service of a cultural, religious, or ritualistic context, were in use during the Olmec era, 1200 to 400 BCE. Historically, the Olmecs serve as the cultural predecessor to several other tribes in Mesoamerica. It makes sense to assume that the Maya, whose civilization peaked between 250 and 900 CE, would have followed in their footsteps. They revered the Renella Marina, also known as the Cane Toad, as a sacred figure like many other Mesoamerican cultures. However, the Maya also consumed them in a very specific fashion. They used the skin, and especially the parotid glands of the species, to induce an otherworldly state of mind. The Cane Toad's skin contains poison and can be harmful if consumed in excess, but it did not stop the Maya one bit. An interesting thing to note is that Olmec burial sites contain toads. Whether they had any presumed mind-altering effect or were just a spiritual symbol is up for interpretation. The Maya used an array of drugs for different purposes. They enjoyed an intoxicating drink called balche, using the bark of a plant during divination rituals. The people in the Valley of Mexico and the rest of Central America have been using mushrooms since 3500 BCE as well. In addition to beverages and tobacco, the Mesoamericans were also fond of hallucinogenic cacti. The Aztecs would rise to prominence between the 14th and 16th centuries and follow in the footsteps of their predecessors. They were particularly fond of two flowers, Ololuiki and Tlitlilzin. They used these for recreational purposes. The 11th book of the Florentine Codex, a 16th century ethnographic work by a Spanish friar, Bernardino de Sahagan, that tracks the evolution of Mesoamerican cultures, 
talks about the Aztec concoction Olo Liuki in the following words. It makes one besotted, it deranges one, troubles one, maddens one, makes one possessed. He who eats it, who drinks it, sees many things which greatly terrify him. He is really frightened by the poisonous serpent which he sees for that reason. The Aztecs also used mushrooms to form intoxicating compounds and other plants with hallucinogenic qualities. Ayahuasca, a psychoactive brew, has been common among people of the Amazon basin for the last 1,000 years, which means that DMT had been around for a long time before podcast hosts started doing it. Moreover, coca leaves can be traced back to 8,000 years ago in Mesoamerica. Coca, not to be confused with cacao, are leaves that are used to make cocaine. Cacao beans, on the other hand, are used to make chocolate, and the Mesoamericans have been using that for a long time as well. Coca leaves are common in Argentina, Ecuador, Colombia, and Peru. There are plenty of reasons to believe that the Incas grew coca and used it for feasts and religious ceremonies. The cash crop probably made its way from the eastern Andes before being introduced to the Incas. Now, let us turn our attention towards the Old World, where mead, one of the ancestors of fermented drinks, was in use around the 7th millennium BCE in China. 9,000-year-old pottery from the Neolithic village of Jiahu in northern China shows that the Chinese were fond of fermented beverages. It was also being produced 8,000 years ago on the island of Crete. There are claims that alcohol was fermented in the Fertile Crescent, a region in the Middle East, around 10,000 years ago. It is also mentioned in the ancient Indian epic Rig Veda. Its literary legacy trickled down the years as it kept making appearances in other literary epics like Beowulf and even Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. By 6000 BCE, berry wine was also being used. This is not to say that the Old World did not like narcotics. A prehistoric cave painting at Tassili Najir in Algeria that dates back to 8000 BCE depicts people engaged in the use of psychedelic drugs. The use of medicinal plants extends further back to the Paleolithic Age. Who knows whether that was all they used it for? The civilization of China, the Indus River, Mesopotamia, and Egypt were not as conservative as people would have you believe. Cannabis was being used in China around 3000 BCE, and nomads like Yamnaya probably brought it to Eurasia and North Africa. Even though it is rarely mentioned in explicit terms, and it is hard to decipher the names of plants from ancient languages, it is widely accepted that Mesopotamians used cannabis for medical as well as recreational purposes. On the other hand, the Egyptians show cannabis explicitly in their lore and iconography, especially in the imagery of various tombs and graves. They used it for rituals and festivals, like many other ancient cultures. But they also believed that weed was central to witchcraft practices. Like their fellow Mesopotamians, they also used it recreationally. As we discuss the Mesopotamians, let us head to the ancient Sumerians, widely regarded as the ancestor of all human civilizations. The Sumerians were using opium around 5000 BCE, and their tablets specify an almost daily intake of poppy seeds. Meanwhile, Turkey and Egypt were busy experimenting with local plants, including the blue lotus. Interestingly, new archaeological research has revealed that the tomb of King Tutankhamun an ancient pharaoh who lived during the 14th century BCE was covered with blue water lilies. After the ancient Sumerians, the Assyrians used poppy seeds as well. By that point, the use of opium had started to extend beyond the cradle of civilization. Almost all ancient civilizations from this point forward used opium for medicinal purposes and otherwise. The Egyptians, the Arabs, the Greeks and Romans, the Chinese and the Indians, every civilization used it to some extent. The Phoenicians and the Minoans were the primary culprits in this regard. They took opium from Egypt to the Mediterranean, where it quickly became common. All of this happened somewhere around the 12th century BCE. Scientific evidence shows that opium was in use in Cyprus around 3,000 years ago, 1100 BCE. It had been common in Egypt and northern Africa for a while, and archaeologists have found residue inside pottery that testify to that effect. However, it is interesting to note that their love for opium manifested itself much differently than it usually does today. The Mesopotamians and the Egyptians used to eat opium. In Asia, lesser drugs have continued from ancient to modern times. Betel nut or areca seeds are still common throughout Asia. 
they made their way to the Mediterranean during the Renaissance era. The interesting thing to note here is that drug use had never been made illegal until recent times. Even in the heyday of the Greeks and the Romans, who were the fathers of the modern Western civilization, it was legal. The Romans used to drink Cretic wine, an opium-based drink. The Mediterranean people also hallucinated by consuming a certain species of sea bream. There are some claims that Marcus Aurelius was most probably addicted to opium, and even if he was not, he was most certainly a regular user. There are several reasons to believe that your favorite Greco-Roman figure might have used hallucinogenic drugs recreationally. The Greek physicist Hippocrates, who is considered a foremost figure in the history of medicine, talked about opium in the following words, divinum opus est sedare dolores, which roughly translates to divine work is the easing of pain. The statement clearly shows a link between the consumption of opium and the religious, spiritual, and recreational activities of the time. These people were responsible for creating the legal and justice systems revered throughout the world today. They gave birth to philosophy and democracy. It is mind-boggling to think that most of them might have been high. Religion, narcotics, and in some cases sexuality have been intertwined throughout history. In Homer's Odyssey, Helen of Troy drinks wine with a drug that rids her of her woes. In most classical literature, one comes across magicians and sorcerers. These are not isolated incidents. One could very well consider them hints of the common use of narcotics throughout history. In Plato's Symposium, Alcibiades appears on the scene as a drunk. Ovid mentions the use of nightshades for sorcerous concoctions. Most of the ancient texts are poetic because of the use of psychedelic drugs. Poetry was far more prevalent in the olden days. From oral transmission of fables to their epic retellings, it is a somewhat reasonable assumption that hallucinogenic drugs played a crucial role in the equation. This association of creativity with drugs has continued in modern times. Let us take an example from medieval times to close this topic. Today, scholars believe that the poison Shakespeare was referring to in Hamlet was henbane, a common sedative and hallucinogen in Eurasia at the time. Shakespeare, Chaucer, the Rig Veda, Homer, and Beowulf, to take a few examples, drugs can be found throughout classical literature. Surely, their inclusion in such prestigious works would be accompanied by personal experiences and observations to some extent. We hope you enjoyed this video on what drugs did they use in ancient times. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. The link is in the description.